Ah shit, here we go again. Bago yung sikay na naman, mababangga ni Trakon yung bida, marireincarnate sa ibang mundo, tapos magiging OP, pas muna, umay. Ang gusto ko sarang sabihin sa Mushoku Tensei, pero kung yan din ang unang impression mo after mo lamang magbase sa synopsis eh, sorry to say kasi you're definitely missing something great as an anime fan. Sword Art Online, No Game No Life, No Season 2, Overlord, Lag Horizon, Yojo Senki, Kenja no Mago, Rezero Kara Hajimaru Isekai Saikatsu, Kono Subarashi Isekai Mishoku Fukuo, Isekai Wa Smartphone to Tomoni, Isekai Mao to Shokan Shoujo no Dorei Majutsu, Death March Kara Hajimaru Isekai Kyoso Kyoku, Tensei Shitara Slime Data Pen, Tate no Yusha no Nariagari, Tsuzo Kogiki Gazentai Kogiki Denikai Kogiki no Okasa no Asuki desu ka? Malamang sa malamang eh, you've seen enough isekai na at this point at dahil nga sa tinatawag na isekai boom for the past years, patuloy pa ding lumalaki ang market for this genre with more and more new isekai titles getting released every anime season. At dahil dyan, nagiging sobrang saturated na ang isekai sa anime industry today na unti-unti na itong nanonormalize at nagiging common, hence pabawas na ng pabawas ang impact sa viewers. Blank gets revived as blank with blank powers. Yan lagi yung makikita mong common formula which makes isekai anime ngayon as sobrang generic na. So ano pinagkaiba ng Mushoku Tensei? Aside sa maiksi at madaling tandaan ng title sa panahon ngayon na kung saan meta ang mas mahaba e eh, mas cool, wala. Kasi it follows din the same isekai formula. Halos lahat ng isekai anime tropes makikita mo rin dito. Pero what actually makes Mushoku Tensei stand out sa pagiging generic isekai? Ang sagot ko dyan, two words. Execution and Delivery. Ang maganda sa Mushoku Tensei is, it actually knows kung ano yung ginagawa niya at kung paano gawin ito ng tama. Para siyang veteranong isekai na subok na ng panahon na biglang lumabas para ipakita sa mga isekai adaptations ngayon how to do this shit right. The series didn't start right off the bat para i-shout out na, Oy, naisekai ka sa isang fantasy world. Although may idea na yung MC na na-reincarnate siya, since common sense na siya sa mga bida ngayon, it was refreshing to see how they introduced this element, not until dun sa part na ma-realize na nga ng MC himself na he's really in a different world with sword and magic. It was amazing to see how actually amazed the MC was. From the part magic was first introduced, then little by little showing how the MC unlocks his magic, and then slowly figuring out how it works, it was presented steadily in a way na it's pulling the viewers to build curiosity and interest to see how this world works. Merong explanation, a theory behind how magic works. Mushoku Tensei took its sweet time para ilay out lahat ng details na to para i-build up yung world setting. Ito yung sinasabi kong proper execution. Everything went in a step-by-step -step process. Hindi siya isang bagsakan lang at the beginning na yes, we have magic in here. This applies din sa MC natin na si Rudy. Merong enough development after niyang ma-reincarnate. Though pinakita na may potential siya to be special, hindi siya imbagad sa episode 1 pa lang. Kumpara sa Pilipinas, dito dumaan lahat sa tamang proseso. The show took its time para i-build up yung ability and skills niya. From being a baby, merong mga snapshots of moments habang lumalaki siya physically and magically. Hindi siya naging imba overnight. Nag-aral siya. Nag-training siya. It took fucking years para ma-master niya yung magic niya. Of course, with her lovely tutor. Roxy Gang, rise up! Yung pacing at flow of time sa story contributes well para ma-emphasize yung growth ng character. The show is presenting it in a way na nagiging witness ka at part ng something big in the making. And given how dark and worthless he sees himself from his past life, with all the despair and regrets that he had para sumukong mabuhay, seeing Rudy grow more as a human this time in his new life was a sight to behold. He's now got the chance para mag-celebrate ng birthdays, build a healthy relationship with his family, admire someone, overcome his fears and trauma para makapag-move on, making a new friend, at pagkakaroon ng hope to live life to the fullest this time. It invoked a lot of empathy to the viewers, giving us a better view sa internal struggles ni Rudy as a human being. And because of that, they successfully gave a solid foundation sa main character right at the start pa lang ng story. Sobrang worth mentioning din yung internal dialogues niya, yung constant at sobrang casual narration ng MC giving shitty comments every time, gamit yung bosses niya from his former self, makes it more interesting and fun to watch. Paulo wa kuzu yarou da kedo, nanda kanda itte hanashi ga au. Ore mo seishin wa 40 sai o koeta moto nito. While a lot of isekai characters ay may kanya-kanyang quirks at images, Rudy has made his name to be the horny kid, isekai MC. Well, the author admitted naman talaga na yung character niya is by nature, eh talagang perverted. Hindi ko naman dinideny na toss bus talaga si Rudy. 
Remember he's a scum o Jason na madaming kalyo na ang pinundar sa pagkaflop sa harap ng PC in a body of a kid. Tapos add mo pa yung fact na tossbus yung tatay niya, yung tito niya, nasa lahi talaga nilang pagiging tossbus kaya di na nakakagulat how much level of horniness meron sa katawan tong batang to. And this acts of perversion in the series somehow received criticisms which doesn't really make sense to me kung anong klaseng pag-iisip meron ng mga taong to. As if naman ngayon lang sila nakakita ng mga fan service sa isang anime. Like, seryoso, di ba kayo nagsasawa sa the usual harem protag na sobrang dense at asa lang sa plot devices ng author para magkaroon ng etchy moments? Huwag na tayong maglokohan dito. We have all those what if fantasies kaya nga sa 6 digit codes tayo madalas kumakapit. Kaya mad respect kay Rudy kasi he's a real man among men showing how things is done. As for the fan service, meron siyang depth and substance. Area depth. And a realistic portrayal. For me, it is acceptably lewd kasi the characters are doing it as a perfect depiction na they are human following man's instinct and desires. And it's actually mild pa nga eh compared sa mga ecchi animes talaga on how they go full lewd sa fan service nila. In terms of world building, Mushoku Tensei is good in giving us glimpse of how vast their world is. There are continents, nations, lores, different races being mentioned. They even have their own language spoken to make this diverse setting more realistic. May mga foreshadowings here and there, preparing us for future arcs and developments. Lahat merong preparations bago mag-introduce ng new elements sa story. This goes back to the proper execution that I pointed out earlier. Talagang masinsina nilang nilalatag isa-isa yung mga events ng story at the right pacing. You can see na the first score ng season 1 was mainly just the prologue pa lang ng main story. Imagine, One core which is usually composed of 12 episodes, kapag kinumpare mo yun sa mga isikay anime adaptations ngayon, yung 12 episodes na yun is sobrang compressed na 3 to 4 arcs na agad yun ng story from the original source, especially Ooh, light novels. Ganun kapulido yung pagkaka-adapt ng story ng Mushoku Tensei to anime. And speaking of episode delivery, of course di pwedeng di ko ma-mention dito yung production quality na this anime have. Isa to sa mga factor that made me fell in love with the show. I can't help but appreciate kung gaano kaganda yung art and visuals ng anime na to na para kong tumitingin sa painting every time I see the background sceneries. Each one of them is just so beautiful pagmastan na talaga namang work of art na may tuturing. As for the animation, sobrang fluid and well choreographed yung mga fight scenes. You can really see the effort put frame by frame for every animation sequence. Pang movie yung level of cinematography as if you're watching the scenes from a camera. Nalilimutan mo na minsan na this is actually 2D animation. Yung camera shots, angles, and movement, yung POVs and the way they play with the perspective is pulling and getting the viewers to be more immersed sa narrative ng story. This kind of production value was only made possible kasi they actually built a production studio just for this anime, which is Studio Bind, na ang sole purpose is to introduce a proper system para sa continuous long-term and planning ng production ng Mushoku Tensei. Because of this system, may potential tong series na to to be like those of long-running shonen anime we had back then except with superb quality and that's really a huge leap for an isekai anime. Anime adaptation today kasi is something na hit or miss whether the original source is light novel or manga or web novel. While you might say na the light novel was written good, there are many cases with isekai anime adaptations today na it suffers on the quality dahil madalas rushed yung pacing and pinipilit pagkasyain in the usual 12 episode format which results to unsatisfied fans ng original work. Ang ending, natadagdag lang siya sa mga anime na after mong mapanood eh for sure malilimutan mo din na dahil sobrang generic ng production niya. To solve these problems, Studio Bind pioneered this idea of making a dedicated production and environment focused on producing Mushoku Tensei only for a better quality para ma-meet yung needs ng mga fans in the long run. One proof of that is yung actual screen time per episode. The usual 24 minute episode kasi has around 3 to 4 minutes spent sa opening and ending credits pa lang. Pero dito, it takes 22 minutes of solid screen time dahil walang opening sequence kada episode. That 2 minutes means a lot of extra effort in terms of frame by frame animations kaya you can actually tell the dedication they put to make this anime great. They're making it in a way na talagang tatatak sa'yo yung anime na to once mapanood mo and will leave a good taste of isekai in your mouth. This can be a huge breakthrough sa anime industry dahil it can be a model that every other production studio can implement for more quality anime. 
Mushoku Tensei is what would look like if the isekai boom happened during the golden age of anime. Merong reason kung bakit madaming lumang isekai anime na what we call classics ang nag ng lasting impressions up to this age. A part of that is the success of delivery and execution they had during their time. Mushoku Tensei is bringing back to life once again the greatness of isekai anime that we had. This might be an overstatement pero I believe it marks the renaissance age of isekai. The revival of isekai anime adaptations. A show worth calling the father of modern isekai. <laughs>